Hi, Dr. Shook here. In this video, what I want to do is I briefly want to show you how your body makes thyroid hormone and how it's used. The number one problem that I see with the typical medical approach to thyroid hypothyroid symptoms is that the, the single way that it's treated and supported is with a thyroid hormone replacement. We know that there are 24 patterns of physiological dysfunction where your body cannot use the thyroid hormone that's available. And so what I want to do, <clears throat> I want to teach you something that you need to know because in today's healthcare model, today's, today's world, you have to be your own advocate. So I have a little bit of time to do this. I've been fortunate enough to uh, take some time with my family and be at the beach. And while my kids are sleeping, I thought this would be a great time for me to uh, record a video outside and see if I can't help some people better understand their health. So what we're going to do is this. <clears throat> I'm going to draw out how your body makes thyroid hormone. This is not this is not complicated. You can understand this and you should understand this because whenever you're taking a thyroid hormone replacement and that's all that you're doing, you need to question it and you need to ask, well, is there something more that's happening here that could be causing me to feel this way or have these symptoms? And this is the first step. It's gaining knowledge, it's becoming your own advocate, and it's becoming empowered. So here we go. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to start, I'm going to start by drawing the place where it all begins. And it all starts in an area of the brain called the hypothalamus, HT, hypothalamus, okay? Now in the hypothalamus, this is in the center of the brain. It sits below a structure in the brain called the thalamus. This is hypo, or below the thalamus. This is where your thyroid hormone is, is initiated. It requires, the hypothalamus requires serotonin and dopamine, which are neurotransmitters, to initiate this process. This is central nervous system levels of serotonin and dopamine. Now when the hypothalamus triggers, what it does when it's triggered to stimulate thyroid hormone production, it will produce TRH, TRH thyroid releasing hormone. Now where does that go? It goes to this little stalk shaped gland right between your eyes in your brain called the pituitary. The pituitary gland then secretes a hormone called TSH thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, thyroid stimulating hormone, this is the this is the number one thing that is checked. This is in a lot of cases the only thing that is checked by your physician. And you'll see it's not even a thyroid hormone, it's an indirect measure. So the pituitary makes TSH, and what does TSH do? It signals your thyroid. This is your thyroid. signals your thyroid gland to produce and increase its production of TPO, or thyroid peroxidase. Now, thyroid peroxidase is an enzyme inside the thyroid gland. And what, it, what happens is whenever it increases activity, you have an increase in your thyroid hormone production. Okay? So TPO is, is stimulated production of TPO is stimulated by TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay, So when that happens, your thyroid gland will then produce T3 and T4. <clears throat> okay. Now, of, your, of the hormone that's made by the gland, 7% is T3 and 93% is T4. Okay? So you can see the predominant amount of hormone produced by the thyroid is T4. Now here's the deal. What happens as soon as these things, as soon as the hormone gets made by the thyroid gland, what it does is it hops on a binding protein. Okay? Because when the hormone gets dumped into your circulatory system, it's free and it immediately is bound 
we're going to call it a little transport truck, okay? So we're going to put some wheels on it because it's a binding protein that carries the hormones. You see, so T4 gets bound. T3 hops on this little truck, okay? It's a, it's a transport protein. It's like a taxi cab or a truck that carries the hormone to the tissues where it needs to be released. Now, when it gets released <clears throat> into, the, into the circulation, what it does, it binds to that binding protein, Okay, all those proteins, by the way, are made in the liver. And then what's going to happen from there is that the um, T3 is going to go into circulation. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, we're going to talk about the end target for your hormone. Okay, the very end target, what do you think it is? The end target for your hormone is this right here. It's the cell. Every cell in your body, every single cell has has receptors and, and has to have and uses thyroid hormone. So we're going to show the cell. This is the cell wall and then this is the nucleus. It's the center of the cell. Now inside the nucleus you're going to have this wonderful stuff here. What do you think that is? That's your DNA. Okay? And your DNA has a receptor which is a little receptor. It's, it's where the thyroid hormone actually binds and that's what I just drew. It's right on the DNA. Directly on the DNA. So what happens is the T3 when it's made, the transport protein carries it into the circulation, carries your T3 into the circulation. Remember, that's just the 7%. And T3 is the active, the active form. It's what your body needs and uses, T3. Okay? So that T3 goes into your circulation. It goes to the cell. It crosses through the cell wall into, into the nucleus here, and it acts upon and it attaches directly to that receptor on the DNA. The T3 attaches directly to a receptor, directly on your DNA. And what it does is it triggers your DNA inside of the nucleus of every cell in your body to produce proteins. Now this is important because every cell has to go through this, pro this process of producing this proteomic response to produce proteins so that it can rebuild every single cell in your body. It's critical that you have adequate thyroid hormone activity or you will not produce proteins which is the entire doesn't matter if it's a, a neuron in the brain skin um, what, whatever the, the cell is it's required to make proteins now something that you need to know is this action within the cell is also dependent upon something it's dependent upon vitamin A okay so this process is vitamin A dependent Okay, it's vitamin A dependent. Now, this is only part of the story. So we still have T4, the majority of the thyroid hormone, that needs to be converted in the body into T3, the active form. So here's how that happens. Let's just change color so that we can, can separate this out a little bit. Okay, let's just use the blue. So here's, here's what happens. The T4 is bound to these proteins. And where does it go? goes to our lovely friend here. Guess who this is? The liver. Okay? So T4 goes into the liver. And here's what happens to T4 in the liver. So T4 in the liver it gets converted into T3. T4 gets converted into T3. And the way that this happens, 60% of it is converted through this pathway. Okay? 60%. 5 prime, that's what the 5 and the, the dash is, 5 prime deiodinase converts T4 to T3. This is 60%, okay? 60% of the hormone. That's 60% of that 93% there. 60% is converted into T3 through 5 prime deiodinase. What happens is that T3 then gets put into the circulatory system. And guess what happens to it? What do you think happens? Well, it hops on that binding protein. Remember that thing that carries it to the target tissues. When it gets there, it goes into the circulation. It gets carried to the cell where it needs to be used. It goes into the cell, attaches to the receptor on the DNA right there in the presence of vitamin A. It attaches to the DNA trigger the DNA to produce proteins, right? So that's 60%. We have to have this conversion in the liver to get the T3. So there's more. There's, there's, so there's 20%. There's another 20% here. 
of the T4, okay, and it gets converted to something called reverse T3. Okay, that's what the little R stands for. And it gets converted by an enzyme called 5-deiodinase. And so the reverse T3 is permanently inactive, but we want to see it. We need to know how much there is. And then you have another 20% that gets converted T4 into T3AC and T3S. T3 acetic acid and T3 sulfate. Now what happens to them? Well, let's change colors so that we can stay a bit organized here. Let's go with a green. And what happens here is this T3AC and T3S, it goes to this lovely thing here called your G I tract. So that T3AC and T3S goes into the GI tract, and here it gets made into T3. And how does that happen? Well, it has, in your GI tract, you have to have adequate HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. So if you're on proton pump inhibitors, you're taking Tums all the time, you may not have adequate acidity to, for this conversion. The other thing that you have to have is you have to have good biota. What in the world is that? That is bacteria. You have to have good stomach bacteria. Your microbiome, or the, you know, that's why we talk about probiotics and a lot of other things. You have to have good biota, and then you also have to have intestinal I S sulfatase. Okay, sulfatase, intestinal sulfatase allows this conversion. These three things are required to have a conversion of T3AC and T3S into T3 in the gut. That's 20% of your T4. It's a big, big deal. So can you see what happens here is the T3 goes into the bloodstream, right? We know the story now, right? It goes into the bloodstream. What happens? Pops on a binding protein. What happens with that binding protein? The binding protein goes into the circulation. It's carried to the cell where it's needed. It hops off, goes to the cell, attaches to the DNA of the cell, stimulates a proteomic response so that you have protein production, okay? That's what all, this is what the entire story, this is how it works, this is what it's all about. Now, here's what you need to know that's so important. Whenever you go to your doctor and they are telling you, hey, um, let's look and see how your thyroid's working, okay? Let's see what's happening to your thyroid. Well, let's take a critical look at this, okay? Because this is what they're looking at. And this is really important for you to understand. They're looking, when, when you go 90% or more, the only thing that's checked is this. The TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone, which is a, a, a hormone that's a signal from your pituitary gland to your thyroid, and all it does is tell your thyroid to make more hormone. So that's the only thing that's looked at. No one's looking at, ser at, at the hypothalamus or serotonin, considering serotonin or dopamine deficiencies. No one's looking at the fact that inside the thyroid itself, you have to have adequate iodine. For this process to occur here, you have to have adequate tyrosine, which is a which is a cofactor. No one's they're only looking at TSH, and sometimes they're looking at T4, and sometimes they're looking at T3. That's it. That's it. They're only looking at this piece of the puzzle right here. That's that's the only thing. So let me ask you a question: If all you're doing is giving T4, which by the way, T4, what they're doing is they're giving T4 to you which is, they're basing it off of the TSH levels. Your T4, remember, is over here, right? T4 is over here. And 93% of the hormone that's made is T4. Now, when they give you uh, the synthetic T4, most of the time that's what most people are prescribed is synthetic T4, what do you think has to happen? It's still inactive, right? Because what we're really after is T3. But the T4 has to be, what has to happen to T4? For it to work in your body, even if you're taking a hormone, it has to be converted in the liver, right? So what happens if your liver enzymes are elevated, if you have an inflamed liver, liver or a liver that's not functioning properly? Do you think that any of these processes here are going to occur efficiently? Where you need the 5' prime deiodinase, where you need the 5' deiodinase, and where you need T4 to be converted to T3 into the acetic T3 acetic acid and T3S. 
No, this is going to be an inefficient process. This is completely being missed because you may not be converting T4 to T3. Now, what else do we have to consider? Well, you still have this 20% here, right? The T3AC and T3S that goes to your GI tract. And that in your GI tract, you have to have adequate HCL, you have to have adequate gut bacteria and intestinal sulfatase to convert it to T3. So your T4, if, you, if your gut's bad, if you have a bad gut, you may not be converting properly, and that can cause a problem by itself. You see, all these there are 24 different patterns that we can that we can identify that are uh, that that are only one of which is based on inadequate production of hormone here. There are all these other places that your 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 thyroid hormone you can have adequate levels and still have physiological um, inadequacies or poor responses because you may have a rundown liver. You may have a problem with your gut bacteria. You may be vitamin A deficient. These, these binding proteins, remember all these trucks that I drew here? All the trucks, all the trucks. Well, guess what happens to a lot of women who have been on birth control for years? You know what happens? These binding proteins, these little trucks, they get a really, a, a very sharp increase in the number of those binding proteins and the, the, the proteins hold all of the T3 and all of the T4 on the truck and they don't let it out for the cell to use. So what is that? What happens? It means that you have enough hormone but your cells can't use it. What are some of the other things that we have to consider? We have to look at things called cytokines. C-Y-T-O-K-I-N-S. Cytokines. We have to look at cortisol. The stress hormone. Uh, we need to look at stress because all of these things will block the receptors on the cells. Your cells, if you have high inflammatory cytokines or inflammatory chemicals, okay, they will block your sensitivity to the thyroid hormone. So you can have adequate quantities but not enough sensitivity to it. So the quantity is normal. It's not a quantity problem. And no matter how much Synthroid or other medications that you might give, it's not going to change the fact that you don't have sensitivity to the hormone. So there, cortisol will do the same thing. Stress has uh, several mechanisms that it works upon. You have to look at all of these factors if someone has a thyroid problem. If they're having symptoms of hypothyroidism, it's not enough to just look at TSH and the thyroid hormone levels. You have to understand conversion. You have to understand how all of these other processes affect your body's ability to be able to use it. And this is really what the difference in functional medicine is. The difference in functional medicine and, and just the, the standard workup is that you have to look at the complete physiology from where it starts in the brain at the hypothalamus to where it ends at the receptor on the DNA to initiate the proteomic response and produce proteins. I'm Dr. Shook. I hope this has helped you out, and I hope that you can look over this and you can make sense of it, and that it really helps you to gain more control and a better understanding of your health. If you have any questions or you need anything you'd like for us to, uh, to talk to us about possibly um, getting some help and support with your health, just let us know. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.